Now I know. Thank yeah, you very right. much. All right. Appreciate it. All right. That's a good journalist right there. He know, man, that dude does his homework, man. I feel like I'm going to get you in trouble for saying all this. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to piss somebody off. I'm an MMA fan, and I know why I'm tuning into UFC 244. <laughs> but for the more common or casual viewers that just caught on to the wave, why should they tune in November 2nd? Well, I think that this is one of those fights that spills over into, you know, from the hardcores to the, uh, the guys will jump in here and there and to the, you know, the casuals mm -hmm. because, you know, the personalities and the fighting style of these two. I mean, both of these guys have this aura and attitude that, that people love. And the murderers, man, these guys go in to fight. These guys go in to finish. You know, when Nate called him out and the way that that whole thing went down, that's why I made this fight a main event because I knew people it would continue to grow and people would get into it. And I know these guys are gonna fight. BMF title. Yep. What's it look like? Can we get exclusive? What's going on? So. I literally just got done designing it with my design team two days ago. Now the thing goes in and it's being built. And uh, I will have it physically here the week of the event. And this belt's going to be like 50 grand to build. And uh, it's one of one, like the money belt. When Floyd fought Connor, we had, uh, I think the WBC made that money belt. After this fight, there's going to be no more BMF fights? Yeah, no, this, this will be it. It's the one and wow. done. Leading up to UFC 244, you've been saying, I want to get paid on the shit money. And it feels like you're getting taken care of this time. Yeah. Do you remember the first job you ever had? Yeah. When I was 16, I think, it was like a temporary agency, and I'd do 12 hour days for like six months or something. But I only, I only went for like two and a half weeks, and I thought, I'm, I'm done with this. I was still training. I started training right there. Were there any good jobs that you held before you came to the UFC? I worked at this barbecue grill bone and burgers one time and I worked there with my boy Gary Bringman. He was like my brother trained at the gym and next to it was a burger place and my brother trained with this guy Steve Heath who was his trainer and his brother his brother was like the boss over here so he had me cooking at the barbecue and then I was selling <laughs> from the barbecue and he would come out and he would drink beer while I was selling it. So that was a hell of a fun job, but I could only do that for a little bit. First job I ever had, um when I was like 12 years old, I started installing carpet with my uncle. That one lasted for about a summer. That was a decent little gig, you know? It was a little bit of hard work, but I get like $70 cash after like 10 hours of labor. So I was like, oh man, I'm balling out of control, <laughs> you know? But um, that was tough. I got fired from there too, eventually, you know? What got you fired? I forgot in that because I was very young, but I got, I, I did a whole summer fine. Then I did another half a summer and then my uncle was like, man, it's. It's not gonna work for the next summer, but I know the first summer I did all right. I just remember why I got fired from that one. Do you remember any other job that you got fired from, like that oh, specific yeah, yeah, moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I, got an interesting story about that one? I used to work at a strip club as a security guard, but the guy in the golf cart, not even the dude, the cool dude inside saying you and you could come inside. I was the guy in the security golf cart taking care of the cars. So I had a little gig where I would go to the strippers and or anybody that needed something from 7-Eleven because it was like three blocks down. I'd tell them, hey, you want anything from 7-Eleven? I'm going. Yeah, sure. Get me a pack of gum and they'd give me $5. So my tip was like $3 for like an item that was maybe five bucks or something like that. And all the girls were loose like that with the money, you know, or they thought I was cute. They just throw it at me. So I'd go to Whole Foods or... 7-Eleven or wherever the heck in my little golf cart and I'd gather up like $30 going there and back. So I go do one of my runs, I come back, there's some truck with all his tools laid on the floor, the windows are bashed. It was like somebody got out to get him, like they knew who it was because they sliced the tire too, broke a window. I was like, this happened in about like 10 minutes that I was gone. So I go inside and uh, I tell the DJ, I go, yo, so-and-so's truck or whoever's truck come outside. Something happened here, then you need to see it. Like two hours went by, they didn't hear an announcement because they were like getting twisted up in the VIP. When them dudes came out, man, they, were, <laughs> they didn't know what to do, man. They wanted to kill me. They were talking about $150,000 in tools got jacked because it was like one of these nice trucks with a bed on it that they had to like break the top part of the bed to get to the tools. And they said he had a bunch of tools in there. What I saw on the floor, he obviously had tools, you know? So I was like, damn, man. That uh, immediately, like not that night, but the very next day I got fired. Damn. Yeah. So basically somebody stole, stole broke into a truck while I wasn't on there on my, on my watch and they didn't like that. So, you know, they fired me, man. I want to do like um, this Hot Ones segment called Explain That Gram. Basically what I did was 
I took a deep dive into your Instagram and I pulled interesting photos. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll show you the photo and you give me more context. You tell me the story behind it, okay? Okay. Little Dave Chappelle. <laughs> yeah, Dave. What's the story behind this photo? Uh, this was, uh, I ran into him and his friend Ashley Barnhill too, actually. They were in uh, Whole Foods, we're at the Wheatgrass aisle. You know, the juices, ginger mm. shots and stuff. And I'm sitting there and Dave Chappelle was right there. I was with Brett from ESPN and he was like, he's like, hey Dave, what's up? And he, he was like, connected us. They were cool. He knew who I was and, and knew about the fights. And we were both there to see the Canelo fight. And then uh, like a year later, I went to another Canelo fight, the, his next fight. And Dave Chappelle ran it. I ran into him at Whole Foods again. Same place, same fight. Oh, wow, it looks like Whole Foods is a spot, man. <laughs> That's you, cool. You yeah, you gotta go. Vegan. You see that dude out there trying to I play know. me with the vegan? You got a response from him? Like, because by the time this video comes out, he's going to be can't. watching. <laughs> I'll put some senses <laughs> to it if it's, uh, if it's too crazy. Yeah, nah, it's cool. C.T. Fletcher. C.T. Fletcher. Still your motherfucking set. <laughs> <laughs> and he knew who I was too and I was cool as hell. I was like, there's C.T. Fletcher right there. What year would you say this, this was? This was not that long ago. That was like three years ago. YouTube legend. Yeah, noticed, he's the man for sure. I've watched his. I've been watching his stuff. I noticed uh, you started your own YouTube channel as well. Yeah, uh, I've actually had it for a long time, but I've just been putting content. I used to hide the content. Now I'm like, oh, it's, uh, I'll yeah, give you. Yeah. I'll give you props. Whoever's shooting it, uh, yeah. it's got a nice aesthetic. Yeah, shout out to my man, Eli Gutierrez. Is that the <laughs> man right there? Right here, yeah. Okay, he's behind the scenes. He always for those. there. Snoop Dogg. You know who Snoop Dogg is? Of course, man. <laughs> Dude, Dude, yeah, yeah that's the West Coast you. gangster right there. Uh, we were um, we were at the Mondrian in, in uh, Hollywood, and, and I was we were checking out, we were rolling out. My boys were like, hey, Nate, Snoop's right there. And Snoop was like, what's up, Nate? Because I met Snoop before, mm -hmm. and it, and I was like, oh, what up? And I walked over, we talked, and, and shook hands, he was doing something there, and he, he dropped, when he was walking, he do dropped a whole, a whole bunch of blunts. <laughs> Picked them all up, he dropped me some blunts and stuff, it's cool. He said some things when I beat McGregor. I was in Vegas at a club and uh, he rolled up like, what's up man, let's squash the beef. And I'm like, hell yeah, it's cool. I didn't really have a beef with him. I was just What like, about Drake? You cool with Drake? Yeah, it's no hard feelings. I was just like, but during the fight camp, yeah, it might be full on fuck you to anybody <laughs> on their side. <laughs> hey, we're learning a lot about Nate Diaz today, man. <laughs> what can Nate Diaz tell me about this photo? That's me and my brother. He um, just fought Chris Lytle in his second fight. See his eyes black? And uh, I just had a, I had a stitches from training. I had got cut that week. So we were both in there with cut eyes and he was in his best friend, uh, Jason Rice's wedding. I was probably like 16 or 17 right here. I, I thought it was just, he's going to the prom or something. No, he was in the, he was in the, the in something in one of the homies' weddings. But What's the hair situation looking like for, uh, for fresh, young people? man, come on, don't play me. Remember when uh, Tito Ortiz was bald with the, with the uh, blonde hair and then um, Eminem, that was the time right, right there, right, right, they were respect. peaking. You've been cordial with uh, Travis Barker as well. So my question is, what type of music do you do you bump in the car? Oh, I listen to everything. I listen to all kinds of underground stuff from back in the day. Brother Lin Chong, X-Rated, all kinds of West Coast music. Okay. And then obviously E-40. Too Short, Ice Cube, Dre, Snoop, old school stuff. What about Nipsey? But nowadays, I'm, uh, yeah, Nipsey a little bit, more so since he passed. Uh, I already used to watch a bunch of his stuff. More I would see him do interviews and talking and stuff, and that's why I kind of kind of figured out about him on YouTube. But yeah, I've been listening to a lot to Wiz Khalifa in the last five years, and some I really dig. Newer stuff, is that you heard the baby. Yeah. He's got a bunch of badass shit coming out right now. Gucci Shout out man. to Baby, for sure. Yeah, Baby, uh, Gucci Man, all kinds of stuff. And then I like Tool and Deftones, and man, don't lean a bit out, we gotta get it all in there. Yeah, we gotta give everybody yeah. the proper shout I like rap, rock and rap. And... Okay, talk to me about this last photo right here. Man, I had a tip, slapped in I'd be like, look dude, I'm about to headline Madison Square Garden, belt or no belt, but you might as well just give me a belt. And he's like, no. So I slapped his ass and now here we are. Can we talk about Dwayne Johnson? Yep. Apparently he's been going back and forth with Jorge. Have you had any communications with The Rock? No, but uh, I talked to his agent and uh, you know, he wants to, if Jorge Masvidal wins, he wants to put the belt on Jorge. The Rock did hit me up right after the fight and said, save me tickets. And that was before they started talking about putting the belt on him. And, uh, but yeah, if he wins, I'll let The Rock put the belt on him. It's just awesome that a um, dude like that would even, you know, help out because that, that helps out, you know, my, my future, my income. So it's awesome that he that he sees the talent that I got and, and he gives that hand that he goes, hey man, this dude's legit badass, you know, that's really, he didn't have to do that, you know, so it's really, for, it's coming from an awesome place, you know. 
So in your heart of hearts, do you think he's actually going to show up MSG? Yeah, he's going to show up, man. Hell yeah. Unless something crazy was going to happen. I mean, who doesn't want to see this fight? If you like fights, who's not making the two-hour wrap around the block line to get there? If you had, if you were going to get it on DVD next Friday after the fight happened, you're still making that two-hour line. You know why? Because it's pure violence, baby. Everybody's probably seen it by now, the street fights that you've had in Miami, Florida. What's the best life advice Kimbo has ever given you? It's not that he said anything in particular to me. It's the way he carried himself. One of the most humble dudes, I, he doesn't look at. I know it. you see him, you go, man, you want to look the other way. But maybe the most humble dude you could come across. And it's just crazy that he looks like this imposing animal, you know, but he's not. He's one of the most humble individuals I met. And it just showed me like, man, that's, that is how you should be, you know, just because you can kick everybody's butt in the room, you don't need to be flexing on people or making people feel uncomfortable, you know, and this guy would always go out of his way to make sure everybody was cool and stuff, you know, and he did have that other side where he's a fighter, he's a violent fighter, you know, and it's just awesome to see that, like, yeah, th th that talent is reserved for what it's reserved, and I like seeing that in fighters as well, you know. Is there a particular story that, like, kind of a feel-good story, if you will? Well, I'll, I'll say this one because the, the public would love to hear this one. Um, when, when I fought Ray Ray the first time, Kimbo's uh, warm up <laughs> was amazing because they literally pulled up and I was there. I, I fought after him, so I saw the whole thing. He literally pulled up, smoking the joint, put the joint down, took the chain off, gave it to his boy, and said, Let's run it. And oh, just shit. whoops! And just started fighting, man. And that was it, man. He, uh, he unleashed on the dude and knocked him out. No warm up, no nothing, which to me, that's, I can't do that. I got to warm up. I need 30, 40 minutes. Give me my time. You know, it was just crazy to see him do that. And that's how he did all his fights. No warming up, just go. Insane. So I'll say most likely to blank and you name a fighter. Okay. Most likely to have a horrible Uber rating. Most likely to have a horrible Uber rating. I've never rode an Uber before. Um, I know that probably sounds brackets. fucking weird good. to everybody, right? I've never Ubered. You give the driver a rating, but they could also give you a rating Touché. as well. Uber yes. driver. Yes. All right. Um, Roy Nelson. Okay. <laughs> Most likely to pour the milk in the bowl before the cereal. <laughs> so many names come to mind. Who's a weirdo that, that would pour Man, milk? I just seen this dude driving and playing video games, so he's coming fresh to my mind. I'm going to say that dude, Kevin Lee, man. Kevin Lee? Yeah, he, look, he looks. <laughs> Kevin Lee pours milk into the bowl before the cereal. Noted. Most likely to mess up a toast at a wedding. A, to a toast at a wedding? To yeah. mess it up? Yeah. Tito Ortiz. Okay. He can't put a fucking sentence together. Imagine him trying to do a toast. That would be a fucking shit show. Most likely to wear socks into the swimming pool. Diego Sanchez, without a doubt. No disrespect. Dude's a cool ass dude, a hell of a warrior, man. But he's wild, bro. Most likely to bomb on a first date. <laughs> That's a long list of these dudes, man. They might look smooth on TV. I party with them on the real life. These dudes are squares, man. Who's so a square? So we got a Let we got know. a long list. Oh, we got a long list of squares. There is some some real players in there, but there's a lot of squares. Okay, be a give lot me of a pretending. square and give me a player. <sighs> Where's my man? He ain't even looking. I guess I could go in on people. I don't want to mention them. But that dude that be rocking the MAGA hats, that's one of the biggest squares I've seen around chicks. That's why even when Buddy brings chicks that he's paying for, for the skit, the chicks still look uncomfortable. You're like, what? You paid for this? And it still looks set up? Damn, that's weakness, man. And then uh, you want to know a player in what sense? Yeah, or like, like good at video games or like? No, 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 no. Like, Who would you go, like have a wingman at the club? I know you don't oh, need a wingman. E easy. No, I actually do need a wingman. Oh, you do? My wingman, and I always pick this dude, he's actually right there. His name is Abraham Cowell, man. He's not a fighter, but that's always my wingman. That's, uh, that, you got that's game like my that? partner He's not a right fighter, there. but he got game like that? He, man, we'll, he'll be in a room full of fighters, and he'll be the only one to pull sometimes. Who's the good-looking kid? Uh, Luke. Yeah, yeah. Luke Rockhold? Yeah, Luke Rockhold. What? Bomb on the first date. He yeah. would bomb on the first date? So, so Luke Rockhold is like this really good looking dude and girls are always attracted to him. And then when he gets around girls, I, I, I think he's a bit of a buffoon. Wow, straight from Dana White's yeah. mouth. Yeah. Luke Rockhold has no game? Yeah. yeah. But he's an Abercrombie model? Yeah. Calvin Klein? Yeah. Yeah, he looks good. Oh. He's, he's one of those guys that, that the girl will be on a date and he looks good and then you just want him to stop talking. Stop talking and just sit there and look good. 
Oh, okay. All right. Most likely to re-gift a gift. All right. So that's that's got to be somebody who's fucking cheap. He ain't gonna spend the money. He's gonna take something you got him and give it back to somebody else. Yes. Usman look like that type of dude. Usman <laughs> look like that, bro. Like he'll give you a puzzle and then he'll give it to somebody else. He look like <laughs> the type of dude to do that, man. I know you're gonna watch this because you watch all that shit. Do something about it. In the pro side or in the personal side, do something about it. George St. Pierre is very frugal with his money. I think GSP has the first dollar he ever made, so uh, maybe it's GSP. I could be wrong. I don't know GSP's personal spending habits, you know, but uh, I'm going to go with GSP. I feel like I'm going to get you in trouble for saying all this. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to piss somebody off. Okay, okay, most likely to sneak snacks into a movie theater. Matt Sarah because... He's the pickiest fucking eater I've ever met in my life. The guy doesn't eat anything, so he probably doesn't like anything that they have there and is gonna sneak his own stuff in there. You're most likely to wear a romper. Do you know what a romper is? Yeah. I've got a photo just to remind you. It's like a t-shirt attached oh, to Oh, that's a fucking, shorts. that's Usman all day. I guarantee you Usman probably has three or four of those. <laughs> and the purse to match. Conor McGregor. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. Just I'm leave just it kidding. then, we'll leave it. It look like it. Now look at the shoes. That's for girls, ain't it? Don't who wears that shit? Joanna, I can't pronounce her last name. Jake Chen. Try. Nah, she's gonna try to attack me again in the Come gym. Come on, man. She's got a crush on me. If I do that, it's gonna break her heart, man. I can't be doing all that. Joanna butchering Yon her name. Yechek. Joanna Yonjechek. Hey, well, not bad, not ah. bad. And I'll, I'll go Cody No Love, too. I'll bet Usman and Cody No Love both have several of those with the purses to match and shoes. Okay, last one. Most likely to get turned away at a club. John Jones. <laughs> Don't let John Jones in your club, please. I'll leave you with this. Who has the least amount of swag in the UFC? Least amount of swag. Like swag meaning like he can't dribble a ball, he can't get a date. Yeah, to who the can't prom. dribble a ball? And who can't, I don't know, finesse a date? I think a real oddball in this game. I feel like Ben Askren probably Oh, man, that's... <laughs> I mean, no offense. Hey, Ben Askren, come on the show. Um, I mean, I'm just... Am I wrong? That's so evil, man. Come, that dude is no longer with us. Why would you even bring him up? Oh, Rest in bad. peace, Ben Askren. Why are you doing him like that, man? <laughs> hey, you're heartless. I thought I was evil. You're pure. You're a man. You're something else. You're pure evil, man. I don't know if you saw this video. But my colleagues showed this to you. He's trying to tell me that this is not Connect Four. <laughs> I see four that are touching each other. Connect Four is the name of the game. I feel like I won, and I'm the first UFC fighter to beat him. So now he's all pissed off and trying to change the rules. It's all bullshit. Why is it bullshit? This is Connect Four. <laughs> so, would you give DC that win to connect for? Absolutely one. <laughs> I want you on camera to tell me to my face, did DC beat me fair and square in a game of connect for? I just called it, yeah, he beat you. Wow. Four of them connected, you lose. Man up, man up to your loss. All right. Nate, thank you for your time. I, I learned a lot about you today. Cool. Uh, man. Thank you, boss. Quick reminder, November 2nd, ESPN Plus, MSG, UFC 244. Get tickets, it's available now by the time this video comes out. Yep. Missing anything else? Nope. That's it, go buy it.